if not love at first sight there's attraction at first sight because we are visual people at the end of the day yes men may be more visual but at the end of the day we like what we see how we dress it says a lot about ourselves how we keep ourselves together you know um hygiene toiletries make sure that we're hydrated all that moisturize all that's good stuff but when we are getting to know these people that we do like and want to um become more Welcome everybody to the Rally Cry Podcast. Soy Angel. I think I said the wrong. Right. Right, uh, me soy Tyler. <laughs> and we are united here today because that's what brings a community. And I just want to let you guys know if whatever platform you are on, make sure that you follow us. And uh, that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You can also join us on YouTube and follow us on there so you can see our beautiful faces and uh, i'm honestly really excited today mm. because i always love talking to you guys and then also with you tyler and just kind of breaking down things to like how we see things and like how yes. we can learn together mm -hmm. as well as everyone that is listening or watching us um i'm just like really grateful mm. for you tyler <laughs> mm. I mean, look, bro, it is the month of love. Uh, so you're right, you're right. we have to keep expressing that love. Oh, yeah. Or however that love may be. Oh, mm. Baby. Oh. Uh, I also think that, you know, regardless of, you know, Valentine's Day, we should always express love mm -hmm. um, so that we always experience love rather mm. than trying to tr find it and uh, and then never experience it. And get um, disappointed, too. Yeah. So um, it should never be based on expectation. Mm. But one of the things we're going to be talking about today, um, we're going to get... Um, really straight into it I just want to uh, express too that uh, Me and Tyler actually go to school So we're just squeezing in uh, as much time So that we are able to um, You know connect with you guys And still you know make these episodes And stuff like that because it truly resonates With us to like find out uh, Certain things if we're doing research or Giving our perspective and stuff like that So uh, we do post uh, bi-weekly On Tuesdays at 9am so if you guys Didn't know make sure you do follow us So that every time we do post uh, you'll be the first one to know, and you don't lose a second, all right? Mm -mm. Uh, so we're going to be talking about three myths about love. There's so many myths about mm. love. Um, the crazy thing is, is when we watch TV, a lot of times we see, like, this fantasy and how love should be, and it, it's kind of priming us to think that when we go outside of our house, this is how it should be. And it's like, well, that's not necessarily true, so. And emphasize on should be, because we are being, as Angel mentioned, we are being primed to understand or expect once again expect that life is going to be like this when it comes to love oh i'm gonna walk outside and the birds are gonna flutter around me everybody everything's gonna go so well the trees are singing with me the birds are harmonizing with my walk like all these things are happening then you go to the grocery store and oh you are startled by a girl flipping her hair to the side and it's like yep she's the one and everything feels like it's slow motion it's like Mm -hmm. She has to be the one. Or <laughs> if someone was always around and you just never happened to really recognize them, you might think that as well. Um, mm -hmm. Now, it's not to really say that certain things can't happen that way. Oh, absolutely, it could happen, but we shouldn't uh, really uh, focus on that like, oh, that's exactly how love is. That's mm -hmm. how it should be um, because that is going to make you think that uh, it's going to go like that, and then you're expecting it, and then that's where things just fall out of the other favors. Like, you ignore certain red flags, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's just because you're factuated to the idea of what you think love should be like. True, true. And it's, and it's interesting, too. So, like, another thing with us talking about such uh, interesting topics about love, about life, about wealth, about wellness, it's the idea of, like, look at how they all connect together, not interjecting, not intersecting. Or you can say intersecting, but they're all connecting because once again, Angel said one thing that we talked about, totalizing words. Mm -hmm. This exact uh, perspective on like what love should be and and if anything, what our family teaches us about what love should be. Because our parents or if you were raised by your grandparents or maybe aunt, uncle, who knows, maybe even older sibling. But it's the idea of like this love this uh, trauma that they have perceived as what love to be is something that you're going to be ca catching on to. And then it's kind of like this repetitive cycle of learning these toxic ways about love. But then when you get older, it's trying to undo these toxic um, waves of love because you want to drain that out of you because where does toxic love get you? Where does it get you? So we're going to be talking about mm. a very, a very great um, amount of love myths, even though it's only three, but they're great in totality because of how heavy they have influence on us. Right. So one of them actually is uh, 
We heard this before plenty of times. Let me hear and it. Let me hear it. It's, it could be true to an extent, but love at first sight. <gasps> oh, my God. Right when I saw you, I just I just didn't know what to do with myself. Like, everything stopped, and, you know, you was the only one in the room. <laughs> like, there was thousands of people in the room, but I feel like it was just me and you. Oh, my God. Baby. And, and it was crazy you. because, like, you. I ain't never needed anything. I never needed to depend on anything, but when I saw you, I had to go to the doctor and get my eyes checked because I couldn't believe it. <laughs> That's why I got glasses. Like, there's no way, like, something <laughs> so magnificent can never be so true. Like, uh, how can something so wrong make me feel so right, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> and it's not really to tease anybody that might have that kind of aspect when they, re- like, you know, see somebody. Like, it's true. Love mm. could be love at first sight but you can't literally love someone like actually love someone at first mm. sight you love what you see but you don't love mm. of who they are yeah mm. now the thing mm. is is mm. that uh there's a biological uh anthropolo- uh you say Tyler uh, uh <laughs> biological anthropologist uh Helen Fisher stated this uh, that men are visually oriented. She quoted, mm-hmm. they see women who appeals them to be physically mm-hmm. and it will trigger the romantic love system faster, which mm-hmm. I think is true because uh, men are more physical creatures. Like, they, mm-hmm. they're more visual creatures, I mean. Um, yeah. And uh, women are more emotional creatures, which mm-hmm. is perfectly fine. Like, we all have our own ways and perspectives, and um, I think that is a big thing, and that is why also, um, I don't know the exact number, but... Um, by majority on percentage, men are more likely to say "I love you" faster than women. Really? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. No way. Are you serious? I love you. I love you. Oh. It's true. I don't know the actual numbers right now, but it is true that men say that I love you more faster than women do. Okay, so you know what's funny? I'm just glad that we both forgot where the source came from because uh, there's also another thing that says that um, men they only have one part of their brain that's responsible for their emotions. So that's why we feel a lot more. We just feel that one thing, and it's just it's extremely it's, it's simple and straightforward. But for women, they have so many um, parts of the brain that are responsible for their emotions, mm. which le- which explains why they um, excel in maturity faster. Um, they learn a lot more faster and things of that nature because they're more emotionally in tune and aware with themselves. Mm. And yes, there is a pros and cons to being so um, intact with your emotions, but the utilized right. advantage that comes with it. Clearly, you can see how beneficial it could come from. Right. I think, too, uh, I wanted to state, like, since it reaches our love system faster, it mm. hits that hormone of uh, oxytocin. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. And if you guys don't know, which mm. I actually also learned myself, uh, oxytocin is, uh, it plays a role in social bonding, mm. reproduction, mm. childbirth, and the period after childbirth, mm. which is very interesting because if I see if I see a girl and I get infatuated by what i see uh it's a social bonding that i feel like i'm bonding with this person because of how i'm feeling to what Mm. i see so i think you know when men probably see a beautiful girl as beauty is one of those most uh laws of power Mm. if you guys don't know if you haven't read the book uh robert green um 48 laws of power robert green i haven't read the uh the full book yet but i do know um beauty is one of them um but yeah i think that's just what it is though like um men get so infatuated to what they Mm. see and not to say, like, um, it's not normal, mm. because, of course, like, we all know what beauty is, yep. and uh, it's not to say that, oh, everybody is beautiful, and et cetera, et cetera. Well, like, yeah, everybody's beautiful in their own way, mm. and to how they should respect them, but let's just be honest here. We all, as a society, know what's beautiful. That's why there's certain models that are models. Otherwise, mm. we'll all be models. Shoot, I would like to be a model. Not say I can't be. Cause uh, bad bunny over I here. Think, okay. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm handsome. But, hey, that's what I think for myself. And we're not going to get into that. I think so, too. It's not about me. It's about us. Togetherness. I think, I think so, too. Huh? <laughs> um, but, and before um, Angel goes on, I like that he brings up oxytocin because now, as he explains it, whether it's the period after childbirth, before, um, and social relationships and everything like that, it makes me understand that oxytocin has a lot to do with togetherness. And for people that don't have a lot of experiences with togetherness, they're going to be more inclined to seclude themselves, isolation, maybe even depression, because the more alone that you are, the more that your mind starts working against you and your mind shouldn't be working against you. It should be working for you to protect you. Because at the end of the day, that's what the brain does. All it does is want to protect itself. So that's why in certain situations, like I just learned this at my new job because, you know, therapist to be. um, We actually, 
when we get mad, we like our brain literally stops thinking. It just oh, start, yeah. it just starts running because, running flight. It just goes <laughs> it switches on, and I think we're all aware of that. But like we're no, not. I think so. But like a lot of times, it's not explained or elaborated well enough that we literally can't think in that situation. We can't think. You know why? Our emotions. Well, also because when you're mad, uh, you're also not you're not enough uh, oxygen is reaching to your brain. That too. Yeah. That so too. every emotion that you have, your breath changes. So if you're happy, your breath changes. You get mad, your breath changes. You're sad, your start, breath changes. Start breathing fast and hard, and it's like you don't like, and it almost becomes to the point where you have to remind yourself to breathe. Because let's say when you're mad, there are people that argue where you know they're like, like why would you do that to me? Like they're just gonna like you know. Basically, hyper, put themselves in hyperventilation because, like, why? Like, why do you have to force all this out as if you can't breathe? As if you know you don't have more time to get across with what you're trying to say. Right. So even when it comes to speaking, you don't even have the cognitive brain brain power to be like, I need to breathe. I need to make pauses so like I can be effective with what I'm saying. Yeah. I need good cadence so that way it flows in together. None of that matters when you're mad or upset, fight or flight. So either you're throwing hands or you're still talking crazy while you're walking away. Basically. <clears throat> basically and that's why um i just think that that comes into where people like be impulsive and mm. they be like, oh i didn't mean to say that i, yeah. I didn't mean yeah. that i didn't mean that well actually you probably did mean that it's just that you were so impulsive with your words it just <laughs> slipped out to what you was feeling mm. and like okay to a degree like you might have not actually meant it but like you might want to be mindful to what you um, exploit because then those are the words that hurt the people in the end. So mm-hmm. you want to be mindful for that. And, so. it, and it's the idea of like when we're mad, we're protecting ourselves. So we're not taking anything away from that. We are admire, not admiring, acknowledging though, not to justify anger, but it's the idea of like when we are speaking and are talking to people, when we're mad, we are going to be coming from a defensive standpoint. We will say things that are offensive and that will attack their ego, their pride. No, and mind you, there are people that are that shallow that they would be that careless and um, spill out a secret or something that they told um, that friend told them um, in personal space and use that against them because they're mad because they, they know it's gonna make them feel like shit. Right. They know, like when somebody knows your weakness, they're gonna use that against you. Mm-hmm. That's why you don't tell everybody your secrets. Absolutely. You be honest. You could be honest, but not everybody needs to know you. Yeah, there's only a certain amount that someone should know, and even when it's someone that you're really close to, you might not want to tell them absolutely everything. There's some things you should just you know keep for yourself, and not to say that you're hiding anything, but just because of the value that is with mm-hmm. it, and you know, to your identity as well. So, um, it's good to like know yourself more than someone else knows you more than you know yourself, because mm-hmm. then their uh, your identity is with thumb rather than within yourself. You should really be with yourself first. Um, so next one uh, is number two. Dos. Dos. Ah, hey, my guy. My, my guy. Anyways, opposites <laughs> attract. We heard that before. Mm. All the time. Like, these are things that we hear all in, on a daily basis. Like, it's like, okay, well, opposites do attract. Okay, to a degree. But uh, it's actually proven that we want someone that is similar just as us um, mm. because it's easier to connect with, it's easier to talk to, mm. and it's all about uh, proximity. And so, for example, right, I mm. think I got one right here. Story um, time? Story time? Ooh, what's this? Is it this one? Is, I, I'm going to use a new button. Dun, 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 dun. Story time! Oh, oh, I pressed the right button. Oh my god, yes, <laughs> success. Uh, <laughs> Alright, well, before I get to story time, I want to say, like, for example, when we watch, like, Disney, or let's say mm. Romeo and Juliet, uh, yeah, they fell for uh, hard for each other, and uh, regardless of the war that was going between their families, or let's say Beauty and the Beast, mm. right? Differences, right? Mm-hmm. And like, oh, this guy, Shrek, is Shrek, Shrek too, right? Shrek, yeah. Princess Fiona, yep. yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, like, okay, yeah, to a degree, it can happen, mm-hmm. uh, but it's like almost this facade, um, because like, what happens is that a lot of people are not um, really tune. good mm-hmm. in what in tune, yes, or really good at like um, being uncomfortable. Mm. Uh, they like being somewhere that makes them uh, feel comfortable, and where like, okay, they're a. Uh, this, this feels similar. Okay, this feels like me. Okay, I understand mm. me a little bit. So, like, uh, that means I can understand you. And so um, when someone is with someone that they, they are like with, it's easier to connect with. And it's not to say, like, if you're different, like, you can't connect with them. But a lot of times, I don't have actual numbers, but mm. I also was reading into a little bit. And it was saying how, like, a lot of times when someone is uh, marrying another a person is uh, usually based on their religion. Religion Ooh. or if it's uh, their race. 
uh, by majority, um, they're marrying someone that's just like them. You know, mm-hmm. it's not someone that is completely different. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of relationships and marriages that are, but we're talking about majority. That's mm-hmm. what actually stands out the most. It's it's definitely good to say like, oh damn, that's different. They are completely um, out of uh, the societal opposites. norm. Exactly. Um, and that's where those definitely stand out as well. But it's really to say that by a society as a whole, mm-hmm. we are more likely to go in this certain direction. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. like, for another thing, right, I would say, let's look at this example, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you were to go in a classroom, right, as simple as the example is, and you want to sit in the front or you want to sit in the back or you want to sit in the middle, right, there's other people around you that have the same value and the same interests, right? So mm. if I sit in the front, I'm going to sit around other people that are in the front that also want to sit in the front. Mm. And so, mm-hmm. therefore, it means that uh, I'm around people that have my same uh, value. And mm-hmm. more likely, since they're near me, I'm more likely to talk to them. And then talking to them, they could probably become my friend. Why? Because just that alone shows that there is some interest. And the thing is, is that when we're around people, right, uh, we're more like the people that are closest to us, uh, we're more likely to think that they have our same values and beliefs. So they, we think that they think like us or yeah. anything like that, right? So there's also a clinical psychologist, Alayla Pines. Uh, she says that the biggest predictor who we love is proximity. She cites a study that found that 54% of the couples were separated by a distance of 16 blocks or fewer when they first went out together. Mm. So that also is a study to show that, you know, just down the block, you know, I might have not seen you like that, but hey, you yeah. you my neighbor, low key, right. and I like you because like you. you in the same neighborhood, and I thought this neighborhood was cool too. But hey, that's just an example. It's not mm. to really say that some neighborhoods are not okay, and we just had to you know be there because of whatever the reason. But mm. I think you guys get what I'm trying to say. Like when you're around the people, you're more likely to be connected with these people, depending on what, on what it is. Like let's say you go to work, right? Mm. Same thing. If we're doing the same thing. We're more likely to connect. We're more likely to uh, resonate with each other because we're going through the same thing. So. We're easy. It's easy to talk to. So mm-hmm. that yeah. that's and I like how Angel brings that up because um, when we even bring this to the dating perspective, we have to think about or even friends. But like nine times out of ten, when it comes to being with people around them, and as Angel mentioned, you know, being in the class, that body language, which in our previous videos we said fifty five percent of our um, communication is done through body language. So their body language in a in a setting of a classroom spoke enough. Like this person likes must like similar things like me because we're both sitting in front of the class both want to learn both want to make sure that we get all the notes probably more likely to be chosen by the t- professor or teacher um about if we understand anything and probably picked on first because we're in, in the front of the class but now let's bring this to relationships when we start getting to know people and we already if not love at first sight there's attraction at first sight because we are visual people at the end of the day yes men may be more visual but at the end of the day we like what we see how we dress it says a lot about ourselves, how we keep ourselves together, you know, um, hygiene, toiletries, making sure that we're hydrated, all that moisturized, all that's good stuff. But when we are getting to know these people that we do like and want to um, become more with them, we're going to bring out our similarities first. If not love at first sight, there's attraction at first sight because we are visual people at the end of the day. Yes, men may be more visual, but at the end of the day, we like what we see, how we dress. It says a lot about ourselves, how we keep ourselves together. You know, um, hygiene, toiletries, making sure that we're hydrated, all that moisturized, all that's good stuff. But when we are getting to know these people that we do like and want to um, become more with them, we're going to bring out our similarities first. Now, if I'm not the one cooking and I'm not going to want to cook all the time. That's so a good it's like, point. You know what I mean? So as far as that. Yeah. So like, like it, it, yeah, it goes hand in hand. So like if we bring out our opposite details about ourselves that people may not like them. Off the bat. Exactly. Off the bat. What kind of impression are you making? Imagine a job interview. People are more likely to give off of what you know, the other person might be an interest so that mm. they, they get the good impression because first impression means a lot. And that and that falsehood of setting a situation up like that, um, yeah, a situation up like that, it's only going to bring you down further down the rabbit hole because now it's like you set up. Thank you. Or Alice in Wonderland. So it's kind of like, you know, you're setting this person up to believe you to be this person and you're not that. And I understand that um, you want to impress them and everything. But when time passes and you're not this person to be, how do you think they're going to feel when you bring it to the reality that like, hey, I'm not this. I'm not this at all. And then they're going to get mad. But then you're going to get mad because they expected you or wanted you to stay like this. But it's like, 
you know, why set yourself back that far? So be who you are, be genuinely who you are, show your good traits, but it's like naturally, it's not even to be manipulative, but it's also like, this is the best me. I want you to know like what makes me me. Not like what makes what um what me when I'm weak looks like. I don't want you to know what I'm like when I'm sick, because right. everybody is in a bad mood, prone to a lot of stuff, or just irritable, nasty when they're sick, bad attitudes because they're not them. But overall, we just you know show the best sides of you, but also be realistic about who you are, and that's setting boundaries. You're letting people know who you are. You're letting people know what you like, dislike, and so that way they know if they're going to continue going back and forth and know how they're gonna have you in placement in their life. Acquaintance, friend, best friend, friends with benefits, um, dating, talking, relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, hubby, engaged, married. You know what? <laughs> For real. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, we're going to get to the very last one. Uh, Let me hear it. Three, right? Finding someone that completes you. Oh, wait, can you repeat that nice finding, and slow? Finding someone that completes you. Mm. That's definitely a myth. That sounds, That's, like, that sounds mm. like the sandwich I didn't have. <laughs> so it didn't complete you? Uh, nah, because it was mid. I'm not going to lie. The uh. last sandwich I made was mid. It was, I didn't toast it. I think that's why. Oh, man. See, you got to toast it. That's no oh, garlic butter. Garlic Ooh. butter. Yeah, land, garlic of, butter? La, land of Lakes garlic butter. That's the name brand. Land of Lakes garlic butter. I put you on. My girlfriend told me about it. it, oh. it yeah, yeah, month of love. So we got to talk about it. You know, oh. relationships. So. Uh, I think that there is uh, no such thing of finding someone that completes you. Thank you. Because you shouldn't find someone that completes you. You should already be completed. You should find someone that compliments you well, that reminds you of who you are. That's what love is. Love is when someone's loving you in ways that reminds you of who you are Uh, in mm -hmm. a positive light and then reminds you to certain things that you might want to work on so that you can grow uh, together and as an individual because mm-hmm. the thing about love it should be always forever growing not being complacent to what you're used to and then you know we wonder why certain relationships feel like they're the same or etc mm-hmm. or we're not growing as people and you're holding me back quote quote <laughs> it was well, because maybe one person is not being really good at taking criticism or wanting to change for the better or mm-hmm. anything like that change is good mm-hmm. only for the better like they could be change that is bad but like a lot of times, if two parties can be uh, very well aware of themselves mm. and, like, knowing how to have good, effective communication, because mm. there is communication at all times majority, but is it effective? Is it actually getting your message across the right way? Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, I think that we definitely get that misconception of thinking that we need to find this person that that completes us and fill this void that i'm lacking like oh i'm not really good at this so i should find someone that's good at that well no actually because then you lose your identity to Mm -hmm. to that that area like if let's say i'm not good at communicating there was actually a girl that was saying like oh well like i think um it's important to find someone else that, you know, can work on your weaknesses. Okay, I can definitely see that. But I wouldn't say I would want to rely on another person on, you know, working on my strengths. You know, I would ha- want them to help me on my strengths, but not mm-hmm. work on my strengths. Because it's mm-hmm. my responsibility, let's say for the example that she brought up, is my responsibility to be a good communicator. Mm-hmm. Now, she can... That other person can be an influence to help me communicate better because of how they talk to me. I'm like, okay, I'm reflecting on how you are with me. Now I can, okay, let me articulate my words better because, Mm -hmm. you know what? You respect me in so many ways that, you know, I I should respect myself Mm -hmm. and then respect you right back. Mm -hmm. You know, like love is is a cycle. You know, it, it recycles. It's not to just give it away and then, you know, it just be taken. Love is not to be taken. It's to be shared. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, when... Someone else shares their knowledge with you, and all you have to do is reflect off of it and then learn from it. Mm-hmm. And um, I think, like, we're all trying to find our soulmate and find the one, mm. our knight in shining armor that will <laughs> slay the dragon and climb up the mountain or Come the tower. Come save me. And it'll be, like, a whole story. Um, but I think we just get infatuated that, by that idea, um, mm-hmm. even if it's, like, you know, finding a quote, quote, queen however you want to say or it for, king. For, for men or women, whatever analogy you want to have. But I think instead of trying to look for someone on the outside is 
all about looking in the inside for yourself first. And I say it all the time. If you can't love yourself, you can't love anyone else. If you can't mm. trust yourself, you can't trust anyone else because you're still um, dealing with the things that um, you're dealing with yourself. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's important. And um, I'm also um, a true believer that love comes to you when you're ready for it. Yes. Um, not to like when you're not ready for it, it's not going to come your way because I think if we if we want to be a little spiritual, mm -mm. uh, <laughs> want to say God, Loa, law of attraction, mm -hmm. um, things will come to you when you're prepared for it or mm -hmm. you're preparing for it. like you got to prepare your love, uh, in, so that you can be ready to be loved and be loving. So, mm -hmm. and I really appreciate how Angel brought up the idea of like. When it comes to being complete yourself on your own, I look at it like this. So when you have puzzles that you're putting together and everything, and they could be quadrants of worlds, right? And you're already this puzzle that's been completed. Now, there's nothing wrong with you being complete already. If anything, we it would be uh, highly recommendable that you're already complete. So then that way, somebody is complimenting you, but also making this connection where all right, now this bridge can connect to another world. Now we're connecting everything together. We're a universe. We are all within our own universe. So as long as we understand that we are the creators of our own universe, life is the way it is because of what you can control and what your surroundings are. But we're not uh, properly trained to understand that we have a lot more power than we think. And that's just based on how societal norms are for us. So we can basically be set up for dang not danger, but also failure. And when it comes to at least wanting to feel complete, it's the idea of fulfillment and somebody's lacking something and they haven't come to the conclusion about what it is I am lacking. And it's scary to come to that realization because you have to come to the truth with a lot of things, especially like what did happen in childhood um, experiences. Exactly. Because if we're going to think about it, uh, our traumas could come from our teenage years and even our young adult years and our adolescence. But then we got to think about what was it exactly that made me feel like love was like this or why I don't think that love is what it is to be because what did I see when I was younger? What did I absorb when I was younger? And nobody is ready. Like, or we can never be ready because, you know, things happen unexpectedly. Like, let's say having a kid, there's never a right time to have a child. It would be ideal to like, I want to have my career. I want to be making six figures. I want to have my house and mansion ready and then bring a wonderful baby into this world. That's not ideal because nothing goes with your plans, especially like trying to plan for a child. Because yeah. let's say you have everything, then come to find out you can't have kids. Like, imagine wait, that. Like, God That's... forbid, like, like, God forbid that sounds crazy, but it's little things like that. Things are externally out of your control. You can't expect this to go the right way. So, to expect that, you, that this person is to complete you, what's going to happen when you and that person break up? Now you're not complete. Now you convince yourself I all this empty. time, I'm empty, I'm void. I don't feel nothing. I don't, I don't deserve I, to be anything. I don't know who I am anymore. Like, I'm not anything without you. I'm going to kill myself if if um, if me and you can't work this out. And we're not making fun of people that get like that. But it's also the idea of, like, who we were before that person came to our lives is way more important than who we, were, who we became in that situation. Because if you guys still broke up, why even dwell on the fact that of who you were when you were with that person? Clearly, you weren't genuinely happy. You depended on your own source of happiness prior to that person. Now, it may not be susceptible to what happiness would have uh, been better to feel or experience, but it's definitely way healthier to be dependent on your own love and trust of whatever that may be, even if it's a 5 out of 10, compared to a love that's falsified to be a 10 out of 10 when really it's a 3 out of 10. Mm. So look what kind of investment that you're making into to go from a 6 out of 10 when, or even a 5 out of 10 when you were by yourself to wow. then go to a falsified Eight, when really, if you cut that in half, that's a three. So you think an eight out of ten love with somebody else is good for you, but then cut that in half, and that's what it is, because now you guys are broken up. Now you're reflecting when you heal and understand, this person didn't really love me. They didn't think about me or put me first. I wasn't on their mind some of the times. They didn't make me lunch when um out when um I was about to get ready for work. And knowing that I did this for them is like, love is reciprocation. Love is sharing. Love is bonding. Love is unifying. Love is communicating bringing a community together right. building a community healing a community breaking so many childhood traumas and all these other things together because that's what love does it heals but it can't do what it does if we are not properly healed or we are not properly there together because if we're not there for ourselves as angel mentioned 
if we don't trust ourselves, if we don't love ourselves, then what are we doing trying to be with other people? Can't pour out of an empty cup. Mm-mm, not at all. Not at all. <clears throat> Before uh, um, we finish this off and conclude everything, mm-hmm. uh, I was kind of just thinking of how, like, Big Sean said it. Like, mm. it real quick, he was just like, we had the independent love. You try to bring a label in, girlfriend. And, you mm. know, it's really just to say, like, well, it's we had that independent love. Mm-hmm. And you try to bring a label in, girlfriend. Well, I think he's saying, like, well, we had the independent love, and now that we bring a label in, now everything is being codependent. Mm-hmm. So, like, instead of having codependent love, you mm-hmm. should have that independent love and share your independent love with each other and mm-hmm. not ha- be so co- codependent on each other's love. And that's kind of like how mirroring comes in because we yeah. mirror who we surround ourselves by. So, like, Reflection. you know, we bring this independent love together. And it's, and it, once again, even with um going back to our love languages video, <laughs> it's the idea of, like, understanding, okay, my love language is quality time. Angel's love language is words of affirmation. So we're still respecting what our love languages are. But in the idea of still reciprocating what this person is going to need or expect from us, knowing that, we're aware of their love language. So quality time and words of affirmation, those are two great things. Just hang out with the person. And if they're down or if they're talking or anything like that, tell them how much you appreciate how well they can express themselves. Tell them how much you appreciate them being able to be within their own energy and not let anybody change who they are, sway their opinions or sway their heart because they're not true to themselves. You could appreciate somebody for that. So once again, like Angel made a great point and I just had to elaborate that further. Yeah. Well, We're going to start uh, concluding everything. And uh, as you know, there is so many other myths about love and mm. like everything that we say, like is not to be taken so literally like there's a balance between everything mm-hmm. and everything should be taken lightly, especially we're talking about love because everybody have their own perspective of love. Everybody have their mm. own schemas mm. of what love is and everything. So um, which schemas, if you guys don't know, is kind of just like the perception of like what uh, we get for ourselves, like, we have an idea of what uh, uh, a robber is and what a teacher is and et cetera. Mm. And maybe we can make a video talking about what schemas are and stuff like that because I actually just learned that the other day uh, in class. So That, that kind of reminds me of stereotyping to an extent because when you stereotype, it's kind of like you're degree. categorizing somebody. To a degree, yes. Yeah, so, like, yes, you know. Yeah. my friend. <laughs> so it's expectation and, and, and standards. Yeah, expectation yeah. and standards. Uh, so I just want to appreciate you guys. Uh, honestly, uh We've been getting a lot of love from you guys. Mm. Uh, if we're posting on Instagram and our reels, if we're posting on YouTube, we also post reels on there, small clips, so that it kind of gets straight to the point of what we be talking about in our videos because I know some of the times you guys don't have enough time. But if you mm. guys do have time, you can listen to it on a drive, if you're cleaning, anything like that, whatever platform you're on, if it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Cast, CastBox, or even if it's on YouTube and you want to watch our beautiful faces and join us on the Rally Cry podcast. Like, come on now. Let's go. And TikTok. And TikTok. Yeah, if you like being on TikTok as well. <laughs> oh, and um, don't forget Pinterest. We got a Pinterest now. Oh, yeah. We're getting yeah, that up yeah. on there. So Pinterest is going to be coming up soon. So for the audience that loves Pinterest, pictures, quotes, videos, we got you. Yep, and so, um, yeah, we really appreciate you guys. Uh, we have 109 or 108 subscribers. I think on, it was 109. I, I don't remember, but we're definitely going up. And uh, I really appreciate everyone that is really um, sticking with us and watching us grow because we're not growing, me and Tyler. We all together mm. are growing because we are a community that mm. – is a unity mm-hmm. because that's what matters the most. That's what bu- builds a community, as Tyler has also said before. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, is there anything you want to say, Tyler, to our, our beautiful people before we go? I just got to say, man, I love you guys. I appreciate you so much. And I want to shout out the people that have been engaging with us, commenting, liking our videos, clips. Thank you because it means a lot knowing that we're reaching people and knowing that whether – or not you resonate with what we're saying, it's the idea of, like, you're engaging with us, and that's all we want to do is come together, and let's all share opinions and still be amongst each other, because at the end of the day, Mm. we can have different opinions, but that doesn't mean we got to be away from each other. That doesn't mean we got to hate each other. Like, why does that have to get that far? No, we're not not an army trying to fight for a certain cause and then, like, come to the realization that we didn't even have to fight at all. Like, why continue that burden? 
Exactly. And that's why, you know, we're talking about engaging. If there's any topic that you want us to talk about or, like, mm. you know, really get into, you can DM us for now on Instagram or any platform. Or you can even comment on this video right now if you're on YouTube. Whatever it is that is convenient for you, uh, just let uh, let us know. We'll definitely check it out. We'll mm. take in consideration for it. And obviously, if there's majority that say the same thing, we'll definitely get right into it because we want you guys to engage with us. And, um, you know, we can talk about the things that you guys want to talk mm. about because we're here for you guys and you guys are here for us and that's why we appreciate you and that's why we're mm -hmm. here right now doing this video we got so many things that we have in mind and we're gonna implement and i can't wait for it to happen but everything's gonna happen slowly but surely mm. so until next guy until next time you guys be easy and y'all stay breezy peace Ooh.